if you want to play a game, how do you know who's going to play black and who's going to play white? You can just flip a coin for this, but there's a special Japanese procedure known as nigiri to decide the color. Here's how it happens. The player who has white stones in front of him grabs a handful of them. And the other one tries to guess whether the number of stones in his hand is odd or even. If he thinks it's odd, he takes one stone. If he thinks it's even, he takes two. Then they open their hands, and we check. Two, four, six. Black got it wrong. So this player will play black or choose a color. You might have noticed that there are nine dots on the board. We actually call them star points. And these dots are there for a reason. Well, first of all, they don't let you get lost in this huge board with so many lines. But they also serve as spots for handicap stones. If there's a difference of one rank between the players, there's going to be one stone handicap. It means that the stronger player will play white without komi. There won't be the six and a half points of compensation at the end of the game. With a two rank difference, there will be two handicap stones. It's essentially as if black makes the first move and white passes, doesn't play, and black makes another move. And only after this, white starts to play. If this is not enough, we can have the handicap of three stones, four stones, five, Six stones, seven, eight, and the largest handicap in Go is nine stones. Just imagine this. Black already has so many stones that help them create territory anywhere on the board, and white needs to build territory somewhere around them. This does not look easy for white. Handicap in Go is tightly connected with the Q and Done ranking system. You might have heard the word Don from Japanese martial arts like karate and judo, but the system itself was actually developed by a famous Japanese Go master, Honimbo Dosaku, who lived in the 17th century. Here's what it looks like. Once you learn the rules of the game, you become 30Q, and then you start getting stronger and you become 29, 28Q, 27, 26, 15, all the way up to 1Q. Then you make a giant leap into the master ranks and you become one done. And then you start growing upwards again. Two done, three done, four done, all the way up to nine done. After this, if you want to get really serious about the game, then in Japan, Korea, and China, and since recently also in Europe and in the US, there are professional leagues that will allow you to take on Go as a career. You pass a special exam and you become a professional player. And after this, the journey starts again. You become a one dumb professional, then two dumb professional, three dumb professional, all the way up to nine dumb professional. And next, after all this, there are 25 magical dumb ranks. Okay, I'm just kidding. Nine dumb professional is actually the highest rank in Go. So as you can see, the road to mastery in Go has a lot of twists and turns in it. And I hope that your path will be, if not very short, but fun and filled with fascinating discoveries along the way. By the way, you can also watch these lessons on our platform, gomagic.org. Except there, you'll watch them with interactive quizzes right within the lessons and practical exercises right after them. And if you enjoy watching these Go videos and you don't want to miss others like this one, go smash that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and this is Go Magic.